Here with Mr. Fast, Eddie Chambers. Eddie, you're fighting on this Berto Ortiz card against a, a very tough opponent. Uh, very good fighter, you know. Uh, a lot of stuff going for him, but there's a, a lot of uh, attributes you have as well. What do you make of the matchup in general? How do you guys match up? I think it's, I think it's really good, actually. I think it's a nice contrast in styles to a degree. Um, you know, a guy who's tall, six foot six, versus a guy like myself who's shorter. And, and it's funny because, you know, me being a shorter guy, I don't necessarily fight necessarily, you know, coming forward all the time. I'm able to fight moving as well and at range with uh, taller guys and I've had success with it. A lot of people say it's, it's because of the speed, that is a part of it, but I think it's also because of the skill and the understanding of the sport. What did you make of the last fight you had? Oh, you know what, it was, it was, it was, it was entertaining. I felt, I felt like he handled it early on, but I think that he faded late. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not going to correct that for this fight. You know, I think he's probably trained, you know, extremely hard. And not always training harder is better, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he trains smarter as well. So, you know, he, he said he went to school, so he said he learned some things, so he's going to definitely correct it. But I think, I think it was a good, I think it was a good fight. But I got to give a shout out to Amir because Amir really closed the show, and I actually felt like he actually won the fight. But you know, a draw is respectable, so that's just what, that's what happens. Like this fight. It's like I can't believe it's not on the telecast because like I see like the kind of styles and I think like crap like it's gonna be a really really good fight with like a big dramatic finish. Possible. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I would like for it to be one-sided all the way for me, but never, never works out that way. So, but I, well, I can't say it never really has before. But um, it's just you know, it's, it's the nature of this uh, business right now. Um, the guys who are actually on the the televised portion are all exciting fighters. Um, most people, when they think of me, they, in the last fight they seen. You know, when I was uh, in 2013 fighting at Cruiserweight, I went on a Cruiserweight for one fight. It wasn't an impressive showing. It was a very difficult fight. It wasn't fan friendly. Most people remember that, and they realize they don't even realize I've had six fights since. And you know, it, obviously, no, no more that year, and, and barely any even in 2000. Well, you know, and I had I had a whole lot in uh, 14, and I wasn't really active in the last. Um, these last couple of years, we were trying to get my feet in, uh, you know, my footing with Al and, yeah. and get some fights. And it's been a little bit, it's been kind of tough. And to be honest, when, you, when a guy looks at me with all the experience I have and things like that, and, and the way I fight, and if they look at the risk versus reward, they're like, we're not going to get a whole lot of TV time with fighting this guy. Why well, put him in the ring? So I give Joe a lot of credit for even saying, hey, I'll take on the challenge. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And he's doing this off TV. So, man, respect. Like, that's the last thing they remember is like how like they say like oh sometimes you come on sometimes you don't come on like inconsistent. You said you had six fights, but what do you, what do you make of that? Well, I mean, I, I, okay, <laughs> me being inconsistent. Okay, fine. I mean, you, I guess you could say that because I haven't won the title. But if you look at the resume I've you know I had and the guys I fought and the you know back to back to back to back, to back it's very hard for me to agree with the inconsistent. Yeah. You know, I think when I lost to Klitschko, I think I really lost true one fight. And um, the other ones, I you know, not taking anything away because those guys took the opportunity and beat me. You know, or even the ones that I, I don't think did, but they did. Um, so I got to give that credit to them. But I feel like, with the exception of the Klitschko fight, I was able to, I could beat any of the guys I lost to. And it's a fact. You know what I mean? Even with the, 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 uh, the uh, Cruiserweight kid who was really talented and does some really good things in that fight, I still feel that I have the ability to win that fight as well. I could have won that fight, but he was on his game, I wasn't, that's my fault. So for them to think that, you know, me as an, as an inconsistent kind of fighter, it's a little crazy. I mean, you gotta look at the situation. I mean, look at what I'm fighting now. Look at who I'm fighting now. It's not a, it's not a guy my size or even, or even within 20 pounds of me. You understand what I'm saying? You're used to fighting against. I'm used to it, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, I've made a living. Things, especially with the Klitschko team. Those guys are ginormous. There's no question, but to say, oh, you're inconsistent, it's like, well, um, I'm fighting guys that are like two weight classes away from me. Effectively. And for me, you know, that's like, I've, I've still, even with that, I've still always been more than competitive. Yeah. I've been nine times out of ten the better fighter in each of these fights, as you can tell by looking at my record. So inconsistency, I don't really understand. Maybe the consistency of being exciting, but it's not my fault sometimes that, you know, I'm in there with guys who, you know, they find out, oh man, you know, this guy can fight. Yeah. And what, do, you know, what am I going to do? I'm bigger and I'm supposed to be stronger, but I'm really not. What's, what's going on? You know, they react. And they gotta find a way to survive, or they gotta find a way to, to keep their positivity, their train rolling. And sometimes it doesn't make for the most exciting thing, the most exciting fight. And I'm not a huge puncher either. You know, I get, well, 
I'm not a when I say huge puncher, I don't I'm not a big guy who lands one bomb and boom and the whole house falls down. No. I'm just accumulation of Exactly. And sometimes they look at that as, oh, you don't want to see all this boring stuff. And you know, it's look it's understa it's understandable. If that's what you if that's not what you like, if you don't like the art of it, you know what I mean? I guess I'm not there for you. You know? You mentioned that uh, so why not go back down here and just kind of stay there so you don't have that disadvantage coming into the fight? Well, I mean, I, uh, like I said, I always fight, seem like fight better when I'm at a supreme disadvantage. <laughs> but honestly, and I, know I don't want this to sound bad or anything, but there's no money. The, f the amount of money I made for the fight with um, Chun, TV's over Chun. Talented guy, without a doubt, one of the top ten talents beyond no, one of the top five talents in the division for ten thousand dollars. You understand? The open up, the opener on um, a card which I think um, my man Chin Checker. Chin Checker. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't remember his name right now. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I had to say that because he was one of the guys. Yeah. But um, he was the main event on the card, and it's like I'm. You know, I'm fighting this guy who literally is. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I really had no clue about him. There was not a lot of film on him. And I'm fighting him, and I'm looking like I don't even. He might be good. And then I'm looking at it. I'm like, you know. And then when I got in the ring, it's like, is this? And I'm only getting this ten thousand dollars. <laughs> and when you break that down, it's not ten. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, take it easy. Woo! <laughs> hey. Yeah. No, no, no. So yeah, and there's it's, no money. It's, it's, it's really hard. To, I would love to if I could fight at that weight and fight guys my size. Yeah. So you know what I mean. You can't make seventy five if you really got it. Shit. <laughs> I would look like, you know, <laughs> you would like I, I'd, I'd be, the lips would be white. Yeah, okay. Somebody would call me Tyrone Biggles. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I just don't. If, I would do it if I if I, if I really believe that even even six figures were possible because I feel like that's a better thing for me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have to work hard to lose the weight. I mean, I wouldn't have to be. It would be easy. I made them when I fought that. I was 196 pounds. Easy. It wasn't hard making that weight. Matter of fact, when I fought Tomas Adamic, I was like 202 pounds with short pants on and stuff in my pockets in my shoes. I was probably like 198 that fight. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, see what I mean? So. You know, it's not hard for me to make that weight easy, but the money in it, you know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to train. It's not so much that it would be, oh, I'll go down to Cruiserweight and, um, and, and, and the money that the fight, it's not the, it's not the money necessarily for the purse. It's the money in preparation because you need sparring, you know, you need to eat right, you need to live right, you need to have, you need to be able to go, sometimes go away and be in a secure situation. It's really hard to do that when you don't really have, it's not like I have a huge, well now I do, but it's not like I had a huge, at that time, I, it's not like I had a huge backing in, you know, as far as for camp, so it's like, how can I do it, you know?